Ancient Egypt, Roswell, New Mexico, and David Grohl? Here are some of the biggest UFO sightings in history. Stay tuned to number one to see how the famous rock band the Foo Fighters are involved. Number 10. The Thule Papyrus In approximately 1440 BC, scribes of the pharaoh Thutmose III claim to have seen fiery discs in the sky. What's amazing about this story is that it's the first written account of humans seeing UFOs in history. The translation of the ancient Thule Papyrus asserts that strange, fiery objects were seen in the sky for at least four days and continue to grow in number. Here's what current historians believe the papyrus to have read. Now, after some days had passed over these things, lo, they were more numerous than anything. They were shining in the sky more than the sun to the limits of the four supports of heaven. Powerful was the position of the fire circles. The army of the king looked on, and his majesty was in the midst of it. It was after supper. Thereupon they went up, higher directed to south. Fishes and volatiles fell down from the sky. It was a marvel, never occurred since the foundation of this land caused his majesty to be brought incense to pacify the hearth. What happened in the book of the house of life to be remembered for the eternity. Some claim the ancient Egyptians merely saw a strange astrological or weather phenomenon, but opposing arguments remind us that the Egyptians were one of the most advanced astrologers of any ancient culture. For them to mistake a weather phenomenon for an unnatural object is highly unlikely. Number nine. Roswell, New Mexico. Probably the most famous of all UFO sightings occurred in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. The deep conspiracies and cover-ups that have spawned from these events have influenced art, movies, and music as that event is thought to be the catalyst of all Area 51 secrets. We'll have to talk more about Area 51 at a later time, but for now, more about this famous UFO. William Brazel, better known as Mac, was a ranch foreman on the Foster homestead about 30 miles north of Roswell. On June 14, 1947, while out on the ranch, Mac noticed some metallic debris in the desert and went to investigate. What he found though was indescribable. Tough, pliable metal that would bend, but would bounce back to its original shape without even a crease. Mac mentioned what he'd found to the local sheriff on July 7th, and the rest, as they say, is history. Immediately after being reported, the U.S. government agency swooped in to recover the strange craft and its occupants. Initially, they were moved to Wright Field in Ohio, where they were kept until 1951. But secrecy and security demanded that the strange findings were moved to a remote location in the Nevada desert, Area 51. Nobody knows for certain what was discovered in Roswell, or what secrets the government is hiding from us in Area 51. But whether alien or domestic, the truth is that something was discovered in Roswell in 1947, the government collected it, and has managed to keep the truth a secret for over 70 years. That's not suspicious. Number 8. The second, first, recorded sighting. June 19, 1801. The streets of whole England were quiet, nothing out of the ordinary. That is, until a strange blue glow began to light up the city. The people of the town later said that a huge moon-like orb was seen floating over the city, casting a strange light upon the town. The moon was said to form itself into seven small distinct moons or globes of fire which disappeared for the space of a few seconds. Its reappearance was equally brilliant, at first showing itself like the face of the moon, afterwards in five circular balls, and lastly like several small stars which gradually faded away, leaving the whole atmosphere brilliantly illuminated. Sounds amazing, right? After this sighting, which was the first recorded sighting of modern times, more newspaper reports of UFO sightings appeared all over Scotland and England. Number 7. Tierport, South Africa South Africa has been a hotbed of UFO sightings, including a 1965 UFO landing that was confirmed in a press release by Lieutenant Colonel J.B. Britz, the district commandant of Pretoria North. Some folks in South Africa have even told stories of abductions occurring as early as 1956. One such occasion, on July 24, 1956, a photographer capturing photos of an inexplicable object in the sky claimed she was abducted by the craft 
and impregnated by one of the crew members, Akon. Now, I don't think this is the hip-hop artist Akon, but it's definitely a possibility. Sightings have continued through the years, but in June of 2011, 20 of these craft were spotted as they crossed the skies of Tierport. Some witnesses were even able to capture photos of seven of the craft. These objects were described as silent orange lights traveling across the sky. Witnesses stated that the orange lights moved much faster than the speed of a commercial aircraft. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Number 6. The Ghost Rockets It's not very often that multiple countries report seeing the same unidentified objects in the sky, but that's exactly what occurred with the Ghost Rocket incident. 1946 was an active year for UFO sightings over the skies of Europe. Over 2,000 reported sightings were logged by the Swedish government alone. However, these same unexplained objects were also reported in Greece, Portugal, Belgium, and Italy, and more than 200 sightings were corroborated by government radar systems. Most of these reports described fast-flying, missile-shaped objects. While they typically flew horizontally across the sky, the concerning item, for those who saw the phenomenon, is the fact that the objects maintained maneuverability in the sky, a feat that was unheard of for rockets at the time. In a declassified U.S. Air Force document, it is clear that Swedish and U.S. governments both believe that the objects had extraterrestrial origins. For some time, we've been concerned by the recurring reports on flying saucers. They periodically continue to pop up. During the last week, one was observed hovering over Neubaberg Air Base for about 30 minutes. They've been reported by so many sources and from such a variety of places that we are convinced that they cannot be disregarded and must be explained on some basis which is perhaps slightly beyond the scope of our present intelligence thinking. When officers of this directorate recently visited the Swedish Air Intelligence Service, this question was put to the Swedes. Their answer was that some reliable and fully technically qualified people have reached the conclusion that these phenomena are obviously the result of a high technical skill which cannot be credited to any presently known culture on Earth. They are therefore assuming that these objects originate from some previously unknown or unidentified technology, possibly outside the Earth. The ghost rocket sightings ended as quickly as they began in 1946. However, in both 2012 and 2014, recent sightings have prompted both government and civilian investigations into potential landings and crashes that seem to be occurring at a Swedish lake. Maybe ET is just after the Swedish fish. Number 5. Angel Home Memorial During the same period as the ghost rocket sightings, Swedish entrepreneur Gusta Carlsson supposedly stumbled across a landed UFO and even got to meet a passenger of the spacecraft who had exited the saucer. Carlsson must have made quick friends with the alien race, as it is told that they exchanged recipes for natural, holistic medicines that Carlsson later shared with the world through his pharmaceutical company. Alien pharmaceuticals, huh? Not sure if I trust the source. Anyway, to memorialize the meeting, a concrete statue of the UFO was constructed in 1972 and remains a tourist attraction to this day, especially by UFO enthusiasts around the world. Number 4. Abduction Speaking of memorials, if you were to travel the back roads of New Hampshire on US Route 3, you might stumble across a strange plaque near the town of Lincoln. It's dedicated to Betty and Barney Hill and the fateful events of September 19, 1961. Betty and Barney were traveling home in their car following a vacation in Montreal. At some point during their drive, the hills noticed a strange light up in the night sky. Betty had thought that it was a falling star, other than the fact that it was falling up and continued to be visible for a long period of time. Betty found a pair of binoculars in the car and was able to track the movements of the object as it passed in front of the moon. She described it as an odd-shaped craft that was surrounded by flashing, multicolored lights. Concerned, the Hills climbed back into their 1957 Chevy Bel Air and continued to drive home. Out of nowhere, the craft descended upon them, and Barney came to a screeching halt as the UFO hovered above the road, right in their path. Fearing they were going to be captured, Barney began to speed away. Their car was no match for the extraterrestrial horsepower, though, and the saucer was quickly hovering above their car. According to the Hills, the car began to vibrate, and their bodies began to tingle. And that's it. The couple awoke, some 35 miles away, but had no idea how they'd got there. They did remember seeing the UFO moments before, but had no recollection of the time in between. 
In the weeks following this incident, Betty Hill began to have vivid dreams that seemed more like a recollection of actual events. She was in the medical ward of the UFO while being examined by an alien figure. During her conversations with the leader of the aliens, he showed her a star map of where they hailed from. From Betty's memory of the dream, she was able to recreate the star map, which astronomers have identified as the system of Zeta Reticuli. Many books and movies have been written concerning the first documented alien abduction, and it's most certain that Betty and Barney Hill's lives were never the same after this event. But what really happened that night? Honestly, we'll probably never know. Number 3. Cape Girardeau Crash Cape Girardeau is a small Missouri town a mere 118 miles south of St. Louis. One fateful night in 1941, though, led to a government cover-up and members of the town being sworn to secrecy. More than 75 years ago, on the night of April 12, 1941, a reverend was asked to leave the comforts of his home in the middle of the night so that he could administer last rites to victims of what was thought to be a plane crash just outside of town. As the town sheriff and the reverend arrived at the scene, they found firefighters working hard to put out a fire that resulted from the crash. Through the smoke and fire, it was obvious that this was no plane. As later transcribed by UFO researcher Michael Huntington, the reverend arrived and saw a classic flying disc with part of the side ripped open and two alien bodies that were at least dead and one that may have been dying, may have been alive, couldn't breathe. The reverend looked inside of the flying saucer and saw wires and components of some sort of alien design. There were strange hieroglyphics and bizarre knobs and dials. The reverend knew that he couldn't really give last rites. About that time, the Army Air Corps arrived from Sykeston Field and cordoned off the area and swore everybody to secrecy and confiscated any pictures. There were pictures allegedly taken that night of men holding one of the alien bodies and somewhere out there are those pictures. The story was kept quiet until the 1970s when the witnesses were aging. On his deathbed, the reverend finally broke down and told his granddaughter, Charlotte Mann, what he had seen. Unsure how to take his news, Charlotte was able to get corroborating stories from the other aging witnesses who all claimed to have seen the craft firsthand. Since the 1970s, Cape Girardeau has become a hotbed for UFO research. Number 2. The Battle of Los Angeles Okay, number 2 sounds like something directly out of a Hollywood action movie. The Battle of Los Angeles Following the attack on Pearl Harbor and the recent decision to enter World War II, Americans were on high alert for anything suspicious that might indicate an enemy attack. On February 25, 1942, one such incident occurred and has subsequently become known as the Battle of Los Angeles. In the early hours of the morning, just after 2 a.m., military radar units sent word of what appeared to be enemy aircraft approaching the mainland United States. As not to give the enemy an easy target, a citywide blackout was ordered and the air raid sirens sounded. Reports of an unidentified object in the sky began circulating just after 3 a.m., and eventually the troops began firing anti-aircraft guns at whatever objects were in the night sky. As reported by the Los Angeles Times, powerful searchlights from countless stations stabbed the sky with brilliant probing fingers, while anti-aircraft batteries dotted the heavens with beautiful, if sinister, orange bursts of shrapnel. But what was strange was, the objects never fired back. In fact, after one full hour of firing 1,433 rounds of anti-aircraft artillery into the sky, not a single enemy plane was taken down, not a single bomb was dropped from an enemy plane, and no evidence of an enemy attack was ever found. There was plenty of damage due to friendly fire though. Beyond the scattered shrapnel of anti-aircraft ammo that had exploded all over the town, Windows were shattered in homes and businesses all over LA. Several homes were completely destroyed by the friendly artillery shells falling from the night sky. At least five people died from the events surrounding this attack, from incidents ranging from car accidents to stress-induced heart attacks. While no one knows for certain what was seen over the night sky in Los Angeles, many UFO theorists have gone on record to state that the glowing, moving targets that the air raid troops were firing at with our rudimentary earthbound weapon systems were actually groups of UFOs flying over the Los Angeles night sky. Before we get to number one, take a moment to subscribe. Also, don't forget to leave a comment and let us know what you think about UFOs and extraterrestrial beings. Number one, David Grohl and the Foo Fighters. Any music lover that's listened to rock in the 90s or the 2000s should be familiar with rock legend David Grohl. Beginning his rock stardom as the drummer for the legendary grunge band Nirvana, 
David Grohl went on to found the also well-known Fighters of Foo, or something like that. Anyway, what does this have to do with UFOs, you ask? Well, Mr. Grohl himself has gone on record to state that he was reading a lot of UFO books at the time of the band's inception. The term Foo Fighters dates back to World War II, where it was actually used to refer to the unidentified objects that were regularly spotted by Air Force pilots as they flew missions critical to war efforts. These reports talk in depth about bright lights following Allied airplanes. Traveling in speeds of over 200 miles per hour, these lights would complete amazing maneuvers and formations all around the Allied force planes, while others would simply follow the pilots through the European and Pacific skies. Reports originating as early as 1941 have described these objects with many different characteristics, ranging from fiery and glowing red, to orange, white, or even green. Some were reported as disc-shaped, while others were reported as cylindrical objects or even wedge-shaped. One of the fiery objects was actually hit with gunfire, which caused the larger ball of fire to break up into several small pieces and fall to the ground. While the buildings below caught on fire, nothing was found from this fireball that would have identified its origin or makeup. To this day, no known cause for these strange appearances exists. Some say it was a secret Nazi unmanned weapon. So secretive, in fact, that the Nazis still aren't even talking about it today. Others feel it is related to electrostatic discharge from the planes, a phenomenon that hasn't occurred since, even though the sky is littered with thousands more aircraft than the World War II era, while others strongly feel it was the presence of beings from another planet, truly concerned about the outcome of the war between the Allied and the Axis forces. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.